Thank you, Jesus. Let's read a verse of Scripture together. Psalm 45, verse 1. Just one verse. I'm going to read it from the New King James Version and then read it from the Message Bible. So read it with me on the screen here, would you? My heart is overflowing with a good theme. I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Now from the message. My heart bursts its banks, spilling beauty and goodness. I pour it out in a poem to the king, shaping the river into words. Father, thank you for your presence your love, your grace. We ask, come and do, and well, you're here already, but do in our lives what you want to do today in this place, in us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Thank you. Thank you for your your power, your anointing, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, you can be seated if you'd like. And Oh, what a sweet moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to take us back to before Easter, really before Palm Sunday. And in case you don't remember or weren't here, we were in the middle of a series of teachings on the heart. The heart. And I just want to quickly in review remind you of a couple of things, and then I'm going to do another message on the heart this morning. Uh, First of all, we are a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. So we're a triune being, and that's an important thing to understand But out of the center of our being, spirit, soul, and body, which is believing, thinking, and feeling self. You can explain a lot of other things around that, but uh, you're a believing, thinking, feeling person. Spirit, soul, and body. And out of the center of that of you, the core or the heart flow the issues of life the wisdom writer said guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flow the issues of life in other words you are experiencing life out of the center of your being you're going to experience your reality today somewhere out of the middle of what you believe what you're thinking, and what you feel, spirit, soul, and body. You're going to live and experience your life out of the middle or core of your being. I like Jesus' words, out of your heart or the center of your being will flow rivers of living water. It's so important, these three dimensions of a person Uh, I also, and we do what we do passionately here, because we believe in the words of Jesus who said, I'm anointed to heal the broken heart. You see, the center of our being gets shattered from all three directions. Isn't it horrible to read about the physical abuses that people go through? I mean, it's, it's, it's just horrible what people do to others physically, to children, to one another. I mean, people are broken, and it breaks the center of their being from, from a physical realm. And, and then, I mean, if that's not bad enough, the emotional scars of what people say to us and the, the words that are spoken, I mean, it's not true that sticks and stones may break our bones, but words don't hurt me. Words hurt the worst, right? And I mean, anybody ever been to Walmart uh, where families take their kids shopping? 
and sometimes you see parents yelling at their children, and I'm, I'm just like, are you kidding me? It just breaks my heart. I mean, uh, can you imagine the pain of kids being yelled at and angry parents and, and uh, all this kind of stuff? I mean, we're talking about there's some brokenness in this world. And then you go to the third dimension spirit and all people are broken spiritually because of the sin of our father Adam. There's a sin problem. We're, we're so broken spiritually that God calls us actually dead. God actually calls us dead spiritually. We're that broken. But Jesus came. He's anointed. I was preaching on this subject of healing the brokenhearted uh, many years ago, and God seemed to speak to me these words. Uh, Time, like they say, does not heal. It only covers. Only the anointing of Christ heals. See, I don't want a scab over my broken heart. I want it healed. I don't want time. I don't just want to forget what's back there, but as soon as something else comes up, the scab gets ripped off. Jesus wants to heal us so there is no scab, so there is no scar. He heals us and makes us whole. Aren't you glad Jesus heals the brokenhearted? So that you don't have to live in that pain and brokenness of sin, that, that thinking, emotional brokenness, or even the physical brokenness. But you can be healed so that out of your heart, the center of your being, flow rivers of living water. I want to I share with you now on the heart today and how to live from the heart in, in God's design for you, maybe the most important message you'll hear all year. Uh, I'm going to use for the title of this message uh, kind of a funny uh, saying that I grew up with. And, and has anybody ever heard somebody uh, say something, maybe on purpose or by accident, that rhymes? You know, so you're like, Oh, and what do we say to them? I don't know if you ever said this, but we used to say, Oh, you're a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> right? Uh, rhyme every time. <laughs> you're a poet and didn't. The, the, message of the, the message this morning is, I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> it's from the verse we started with, so let's go to the text, uh, Psalm 45, 1 there. It said, two main things in there. My heart is overflowing with a good theme. The Message Bible said, my heart is bursting out of its banks with goodness. Woo, does that sound like us? That that sounds like us. Look at your neighbor and say, that sounds like you. Your heart's overflowing with goodness, bursting with goodness, right? And so, um, It talks about our heart overflowing. And then it says, my tongue is the pen of a writer. Old old King James says, my tongue is as the pen of a ready writer. And it says, my heart is ready to say or write a poem, composition, a poem about the king, and my tongue wants to write it. I'm a poet and didn't know it. I want to tell you this morning that God has put a heart of flesh in you. That's biblical language for He put a heart in you that is tender and pliable instead of a tablet of stone where the law is written on it. You don't have to just hear me say that you can be like Christ. It's not something written in just a book, a Bible, or on tablets of stone. Your heart has been made by God that you can write that truth on your heart and actually experience it. You don't have to just know written somewhere that God loves you and is a loving heavenly father to you. You can write that 
poem on your heart and actually experience and live in the love of God for you. Out of your heart can flow those issues of life. The, one of the greatest fallacies in modern Christian doctrine is this idea that God is in control of everything and whatever happens just happens. Now, God is eternally in control. Listen, if you're the creator and you're in, in control of eternity and time and you've made everything in it, you're in control. God is sovereign and he's in control. But he made us in his image. And one of the ways we're made in his image is with the power of choice and a free will. If somebody argues with me about that, I'll tell them, your free will is so free, you get to choose whether you're going to live with God eternally or with the devil. It's your choice. You get to write your poem. The writer and author of a poem or a book is the person who writes, and he can write whatever that poem he wants it to be, and he write this poem. Uh, there are people who write dark poems, you know. I mean, you know, there's people who write all kinds of, there's people who write poems that lighten you up. There's all kinds of things, literature written. And, and I, follow me on this message because we're going to get to the end where, it's, where, where you just have to put the whole thing together. But uh, you get to write the story of your life. How you experience life today is up to you. God has made us that way. It's all throughout Scripture. For example, the first one I think of is in James. We all know it well. We preach it, teach it a lot. The tongue is set in our body, in our being, in such a way that it's like a rudder of a ship. And I love the wording of James where he writes it. He says, it's like a rudder on a ship that you can't see. It's under the water, but the captain can steer that ship wherever he wants it to go, even if the winds and waves are contrary. Woo! I like that, don't you? God has set our tongue in such a way that what we say is so important that it can steer our whole life. That's what James says, That's the Bible. So many truths like that. And then there's lots of things. We could point to a lot, a lot of things, you know, like, um, like um, if you want friends, what are you supposed to do? Uh, right, the Proverbs, the wisdom writer said, if you want friends, be friends. Be a friend. <laughs> I, through, in church, like this, we, I hear this a lot. People are like, like I don't have any friends. I, I try to be really nice and diplomatic and real sweet, you know, but inside I'm thinking, well, I know a lot about you already. If you don't have friends, that just simply means you're not friendly. Uh, people who are friendly have too many friends. If you're actually a real friend, uh, I, I can tell you from experience, I don't have time for all the people that want to be with me. No lack of friends. All you got to do is be friendly which means you care about people. You make them feel great. You're there for them. You, you know, you just, you're just a friend to people. And, and if, you're, if you want friends, just be friendly. God has made us this way that we get to write the poem of our life. Mark chapter 7, verse 20, Jesus himself said, what comes out of a man, that's what defiles a man. Not what goes in, what comes out. Uh, you want more kindness? Show kindness. It's more blessed to give than to receive. God made it this way. You, you get to choose what you want by what you, you put out. Like we need a kinder world. I hope the government becomes more kind. I hope we have a president that's more kind. I, I hope somebody does something. How about us? How about you and I just become more kind? And we 
what comes out of a person is actually what affects him. We're like, man, if they would just change, if, if circumstances would just change, if external things would just change, I'd be happy. It would be better. How about we just make a choice, no matter what's going on today, we're going to live in what God has provided for us no matter what, and He's given us the means to live in that. Uh, we can be the poem writer of our own life. This is one of the most interesting messages you'll ever hear, but it's a principle all throughout Scripture. Uh, let's read this in Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, verse 18 through 21. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Let's all say that together. Be filled with the Spirit. That's us at Shining Light, Spirit-filled believers. Be filled with the Spirit, right? Oh, I love it. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another. Old King James, which I like better, says, speaking to, to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always to God for all things, to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Wow. I read that whole list because be filled with the Spirit, writing with your tongue, psalms and hymns, you're singing to yourself, making a melody in your heart to the Lord. You're giving thanks to God for everything all the time. What am I doing? I'm writing my poem, the story of my life. Uh, giving thanks to God and singing and making melody in my heart. What if your heart, and it is, your heart is in the center of your being. That's why we have people stand to worship in, at Shining Light, because we're trying to get people to activate their body. I mean, it's one thing to go, waymaker, miracle worker. Yeah, yeah I, I believe that. I'm a believer. Waymaker, miracle worker. Yeah, promise keeper. Yeah, promise keeper. Yeah. Man, they sing that nice, don't they? Waymaker, miracle worker. Yeah, they tell us that's what God's like. Yep, yep, yep. We're a three-part being. What if I believe God is a way maker, a miracle worker? What if I believe he parts the sea when nobody else can do anything for me? What if he makes a way where there is no way and I actually can sing with conviction from my heart and I add my thinking, my emotions, and my soul, and I'm like, yes, he's a way maker for me. He makes a way for me. God meant for us to get involved all three parts of our being and out of our heart. We write from our, from our emotions, from our believing, from our words. We write on our heart, God is a way maker. And somebody's like, well, yeah, I'm not an emotional person. You are such a liar. You were born an emotional person. Just go back to your childhood when you wanted some bottle, when you wanted some milk. You cried like a baby, and you still do. People are like, well, I'm not an emotional person. I'm just a believer. That's just an excuse for you not to be your whole person. That's probably how people act with people. Can you imagine somebody telling, and, and people do this, just cold as ice. You, yeah, I love you. Like the old couple sitting on the porch, rocking in their chairs, you know, they're in their upper age and, the wife is like, reaches over tenderly. It's a tender moment for her. She reaches over, puts her hand on his hand, goes, man, I wish you'd tell me you love me. And he said, woman, when I married you 70 years ago, I told you I love you, and if anything changes, I'll tell you.
Well, that's no fun, is it? Right? I mean, come on. God heals the brokenhearted. He wants, to, he wants us to experience the emotion of, the feeling of, the believing of. Come on. That, that's what God made us to be. That's why we worship with some exuberance and with some activation because we're a three-part being, and that's what writes on our heart. Because in the middle of the night when the enemy's telling you you're not going to make it, you want, you don't want it, you don't want to be able to say, oh, Pastor Steve said, it's written in the Bible, it's written on tablets of stone, you want it on your heart, you want to be able to jump out of bed and go, God is my way maker, God is going to part the sea for me, I sang it in church and I believe it now and nothing's going to stop me because God is my way maker, He is my miracle worker, you want it written on your heart and God designed us in such a way that we can write the poem of God's truth on our own heart by believing, by thinking, by emotion, by feeling. It's it's an amazing, amazing thing. And, you know, uh, another another truth in Scripture is, is, uh, you know, laughter does good like a medicine. Like people are like, how are you so happy? How are you so happy? And, and, and we look at people that seem to be so happy in life, and you know they go through the same stuff we go through. It just is a choice of what we want to do. I was reading after an author by the name of John Kehoe, and, and uh, he tells about how he met a man uh, named Eddie who he bought a sailboat from, and in that process they became good friends. John would spend time with Eddie and his family, and they started uh, being together a lot. And, and he said this was the happiest family and person he had ever been around. And so one night after several years of friendship, he got up the courage to ask Eddie, uh, Eddie, what's the secret to happiness? And he said, Eddie kind of mockingly said back to him, the secret to happiness? And then he got serious and he said, yeah, there is a secret to happiness. John started leaning in because he's like, he's going to tell me. And then he he said, I'm going to say it only once, one sentence. The secret to happiness and I want you to hear it because I'm saying it once only. He leaned in. He thought, man, I'm going to get the wisdom of the ages here. And after some silence and just that moment of anticipation, Eddie leaned forward and he said, here's the secret. If you want to be happy, be happy. And he waited, he waited, and thinking, yeah, and? He said, Eddie got up and patted him on the shoulder and said, there's no more. There's nothing more. It's a choice. If you want to be happy, be happy. Now, it's more than an author's words in a book. That's biblical truth, that We're to walk by faith and not by sight. Not by faith and not by sight. If you want to be more happy, just start laughing and smiling more. I mean, mean, look at what a smile does to your neighbor next to you. It it lightens them up. A laugh to a person next to you. If you want to be happy, just start acting happy. Somebody says, well, I I don't want to do that because I don't feel happy yet. Uh, God made us so you can write the poem you want. He put a tongue in your mouth, and he gave you free will, and he gave you the most beautiful gift, which is the gift of faith. I was had lunch with one of my good friends here, Les McCurdy from McCurdy's Comedy Club and Laughter Institute this week, and, and Les said to him, he said, Pastor, uh, do you know 
I know a man that got cancer. He said he was diagnosed with cancer, and he said he refused treatment and decided that he was going to laugh. So he, he put on movies of I Love Lucy. <laughs> Anybody here? <laughs> he put on movies of I Love Lucy, and he said he laughed practically 24 hours a day watching these movies, and the man got completely healed. Uh, well, I, I, of course, you know what I said. I'm the preacher in the group, right? Les is the comedian. I'm the preacher. And so I said, well, that sounds like Bible. That's like Proverbs says, laughter does good like, like a medicine. I mean, put on a funny movie and take your medicine. Right? Let me prescribe something for you. Your, 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 your medicine... Um, God gave us the most beautiful gift. It's the gift of faith. And listen carefully. You want to remember this. Faith is God's gift to us that lets us see things in the unseen realm as more real than what we see. That's a gift. Just stop and think about that. You don't have to live in the reality of what's going on in our country, our world, or even your own life. You get to live in the reality of unseen things. God, you gave me a gift that is priceless. I get to be as happy today as the joy of the Lord, not what's going on in my life. That's why people live on a roller coaster in their life because they just live from what's happening. Oh, it's, I feel good today. Oh, it's a bad day. How are you doing? Oh, my, my cat died yesterday, and I'm about ready to die myself. Woo, I'm on cloud nine. I got a new cat yesterday. <laughs> right? But that's how people live. I'm not, I mean, right? That's it. You know people like that. Oh, I mean, yeah, right? With nobody in here, but we know people like that, right? Oh, I'm about ready to slit my wrists. It's a bad hair day. <laughs> right? Oh, it's a wonderful day. My hairdresser was awesome. Man, we are just blessed. The gift of faith is, man, you just got to stop and thank God for that. That I can live in a reality that's unseen because I walk by, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I walk by faith and not by, by sight. I walk by, by faith and not, not by sight. Uh, Galatians 2.20 is my verse, you know, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. I'll explain that in just a moment. I get to walk by faith. Now, this isn't some empty something, so this is maybe the most important part of this message. I get to model Jesus. Where do I get this stuff? What faith am I walking in? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus. Come on, let's all say it. Looking unto, Je looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We talk about that in abstract ways and in big ways, but let's just make it real practical like it is. Jesus is the author. He's the poem. He's the reality we're supposed to follow in faith. If Jesus has the joy of God, I have it by faith. That's a good reason to smile and laugh and have a great time today. 
If Jesus is full of peace, that's a good reason for me to have peace in my life today, His peace, the peace of God, because I have Jesus to model my life after. Colossians 3, verse 1 through 4. If you were raised with Christ, aren't you thankful for baptism? If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Are, are you listening to this scripture? If you're raised with Him, seek where He is and what He has. Set your mind, soul part of you, how you think, on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with God in Christ. And when Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Your life is hidden in Christ. There in Christ, God's divine plan is so amazing that what He wants you to be is always there in Christ, available in its full measure. You can be having a bad day and by faith look at your model, Jesus, and go, he's full of peace, joy, and by faith you can step over into your life, which is hidden in Christ. See, people are waiting until their life gets better. I say, don't wait. Adopt his life right now because it's your life. Step into His life, what's, what's protected in Him. This is that plan. And 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18 says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. You don't look in a mirror to look at other people. You look in a mirror to see what you look like. Right? I don't look in a mirror and go, Wow. Wow, Eldon looks good. No, I look in a mirror and go, Hey, I, I'm beautiful. <laughs> I say that on purpose because that's actually what you should be saying. You should, people shouldn't look in the mirror and go, ooh, God made you. You're his special, his special creation. You should look in the mirror and go, oh, beautiful. God's creation. But we look in a mirror of Christ. That's what it says. Looking in a mirror, we behold him. Why are we looking at him? Because he's the mirror of what our life is like. We look at him to determine what we're like. You don't look at what happened today to see what your condition is. You don't even look to see what the doctor's report is to see that what your condition is. They can say what they want, but you can call yourself healed. They, they, the world can be dark, but you're full of light. They can be sad about what's happening, but you're full of joy because you got a model to follow. I'm, I'm uh, kind of obsessed with, with golf here lately, and I'm learning this swing and stuff, and so I brought my golf club with me. <laughs> so I brought, I brought one of my golf clubs with me, and I'm studying a swing by... by the, a person they call the greatest ball striker of all time, a Canadian by the name of Mo Norman, and, and uh, so I'm studying this this golf swing and I'm 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 emulating it the best I can. And but uh, the people I'm training after they they just say it all the time. If you if you want to play really really good golf and all the pros do this, uh, you have to match the model. Well, it's real simple. You just take video of yourself. And with technology now, you put yourself next to the model, and you can measure every metric. You can draw lines everywhere. I mean, you can, you can see if you're on plane with the model or, you know, where you're at, uh, where you at when you hit the ball, or your hands ahead, or are they behind. I mean, you, you can tell everything, and you just you go, oh, that doesn't match the model. You've got to work on this because you've you got to you got to match the model. I mean, he's, he's on plane here when he's in his backswing, but you're, you're like this. So you got, you got to get this right. Looking unto Jesus. 
th this isn't some abstract thing. You don't have to make something up. Jesus is our model. You can look and go, do I have what he has? Am I, I'm the righteousness of Jesus. I have his joy. Am I, am I bubbling with life out of my heart today? If not, come on, I can use the pen of my tongue to write the poem I want. Start. Somebody said, well, how do you do it? You start laughing. You start smiling. You start saying things like, this is an awesome day in my life. This is the best day of my life. I'm a spirit-filled believer. I have God's power in my life. I am filled with God. I have his peace. I have his joy. You might have to grit your teeth through what's going on in your life, but be, it, we walk by faith and not by sight. We look at the model and we match. We look at the model and we go, he's full of joy. <laughs> yeah, I'm full of joy. He's, he's filled with happiness. Yeah, man, come on, let's praise God today. He's full of peace. What am I worried about? We look at the model and we match him. That's why you want to come to Shining Light because there aren't many churches and pastors that will tell you you're as righteous as Jesus himself. Your faith in him matches you to him. Now, you just need to start persuading your heart. And you do that, you can, you can go fast. Like my coaches in golfing say, you, you, you can go quickly and fast become a master at this quickly, or you can do like most golfers, golf the rest of their life and just try. But the way you do it quickly, maybe 13 weeks, is that you really evaluate and you look at everything and you match the model. You just keep matching the model. You, you keep looking, you keep looking. You can go the rest of your life if you want to going I don't understand why they are so happy. I don't understand why they seem to love life and I don't. Come to church, get a shot in the arm. Or you can get all three parts of your being involved. Start believing who you are in Christ. Add emotion and your thinking and the hardest work you will ever do when I'm working on my golf game, the hardest thing is to match the model because I'm used to what I used to do. The hardest thing you will do is renew your mind because you used to think a certain way, and you're going to have to start thinking a different way. You're going to have to renew your mind until you go, I don't even remember the old way I think like Christ thinks. You, you renew your mind, but you get that in, that's emotion. They call it emotional implantation. That's why, that's why the psalmist David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Why are you downcast? Get up here and dance. That's, that's what he would say to himself. Uh, get up and sing. Do something emotional. You've got you to gotta involve all three parts of your being. You can go the slow route, sit and believe if you want, or you can get in a room somewhere, get in your house, turn some music on, read the Bible, get some emotion into it, get all of you involved. Write the poem of your life with all three parts of your being. Or you can just watch life go by and live like everybody else pretty much does and admire a few people who get it. Or you can be that person that models Jesus with a smile on your face, laughter in your heart, faith in your being, knowing that God is your way maker, your miracle worker, and that you're living life modeling Jesus Christ. Yeah.